most Angel almost presented all uh, what ITA is uh, doing, and the video gave, gave you at least a flair of what uh, we've been um, researching on. So I won't repeat, but I decided to probably give you uh, a little bit of uh, history of leadership at IITA. And I would like probably to follow uh, the team of this uh, AGRF, Lead, uh, Measure, and Grow. So last year, in July, we celebrated the 50 years anniversary of uh, IITA. With the privilege, we had two former head of states, President Gowon and President Obasanjo, who came and celebrated with us. It was really very interesting because President Gowon, in 67, when he was only 30 years old, signed the decree that created IITA. It was really quite interesting because it was during the Biafra War. And the question I asked him that day, what was he thinking about? The Biafra War was this terrible and head of state would be busy thinking about reunited his people and thinking about how he's going to make peace. But he found the time to send that decree, a simple decree. And uh, when he was 88 last year, he was uh, so pleased to see that a piece of paper he signed had established a strong institution that had his headquarter in Ibadan, five major stations in Nigeria, we have infrastructure in 18 countries in Africa, and we work almost in all, all, all countries in Africa. President Obasanjo was a general under Gowon, and he's the one who basically accepted uh, the, um, the peace. He won the battle with uh, the Biafra, and he made peace. He became president, a military president in the 70s. But when he became a civilian president in 1999, one of the innovation he initiated was a presidential initiative on cassava. During that time, Nigeria was using cassava only for fufu, only for that, for feed. And cassava, as he said, rightly, was considered to be a poor man's crop. Even as a scientist at ITA during that period, I was not interested in working on cassava. Maize was a crop to work on. But from that initiative as the president of Obasanjo, five years later, Nigeria became the first producer of cassava in the world. And we saw cassava being used for industrial purposes. And I'll just talk about cassava in bread because at ITA we did research for 15 years and trying to figure out how we introduce cassava into wheat bread. And today in Nigeria, every bread you eat almost in the morning, in the evening, has 10 to 20% of cassava. What economies? We save almost half a billion dollars per year in just doing, using the local content of cassava. I'll talk about cassava here in Rwanda. The Minister Geraldine, I met with her in Dakar during uh, a summit on Feed Africa Dr. Desina was organizing. And I remember very well Adesina calling me to go and discuss with Geraldine, the Minister of Finance of Rwanda. And the problem they had posed, they said, OK, we are having a problem with cassava in Rwanda. It's being attacked by the cassava virus uh, mosaic diseases. And of course, I knew about that because it came from Tanzania, goes to Uganda, is here in Rwanda, it goes to DRC. So cassava would, would certainly disappear. It was almost disappearing. And she said, well, you have to help me. And uh, I'm from Congo. In Congo, we eat cassava three times a day. With all part of cassava, roots, leaves, 
Even here in Rwanda, when you want to eat a good food, is sombe. Yeah? You eat that, you feel good. So there's a protein, iron, and so on. So, trying to imagine cassava disappearing here in this region here, or in Nigeria. So, we could work with um, Rab here, and we found a solution, some varieties, which are basically resistant to cassava, and uh, which save basically that uh, crop uh, here and in the region. I'll talk another, about another problem we do have where ITA has been able to find a solution. In 2015, I was at ITA at the headquarters. I got a call from President, uh, Minister Adesina, and he said, President Kenyatta, I want to talk to you. I was in Abuja, I was in Ibadan. And I said, Akin is a good friend of mine. I said, what do you want to talk to me? A president doesn't call a simple DG. It must be serious business. And uh, yes, I said, you have to take um, your plane and come to Abuja. Yes, I met President Kenyatta. It was a very nice conversation because I could talk to him in Swahili. And he said, ah, mtoto, tuko na magumu Kenya. And I said, Mr. President, magumu gani? And he said, well, you know, in Ukambani, every year I'm losing 200 people. They're dying every year. It's a major problem. And I said, oh, what is the cause for that? And uh, you know, most of the time in Africa, we don't know the cause. We say the witchcraft and all kinds of things and so on. And uh, yes, basically, uh, Ukambani region, 200 people, prayers were dying because of contamination by aflatoxin in maize. A serious problem. In Nigeria, a very serious problem because the old ground out pyramid, which we used to see in Nigeria, disappeared because of that fungus. So at ITA, we've been able to find a biological control where we can fight that disease by 100% and eliminating it. And what we did was research. We did that at a small pilot stage. We could serve only probably a thousand of people because we didn't have the mean and we didn't have the mindset and working just like a private sector. And I remember when I was a DG elect, Bill Gates visited because he was funding that program. And uh, he basically asked me, yes, now here you have a very good solution, but you are serving only 100 people, a thousand. How do you serve a million? Mr. DG, that's an assignment. If you want my support, go and respond to that question. And at the time, we changed the orientation because most of the time research was done just for research sake. You do good research, it stays, um, nobody uses it, and you publish your paper, and if you're a scientist, you say, I'm happy, I've done my job. But once you do your job, then the government, when there's a big problem like that, you can't even explain even what you are doing, and you can justify an institution like IETA. That's the time we pick the philosophy of commercializing technologies, producing them at scale, and IETA, it's IETA became an institution not like it used to be because we start growing incubation, building factories, and uh, just to give you an example, because of that problem, Kenya was airlifting that product of LASEF from Ibada by plane, and they were paying cash because it was a major problem. But two years later, we went and built the same factory in Kenya, and uh, we have 14 countries for the moment which are using Aflasef. <laughs> Let me probably talk about what we believe is going to be the future for our continent here, and what we think, at least at IITA. So, ITA is a small city of 1,000 hectares in the middle of Ibadan. Every single morning, we receive one, we employ 1,200 staff. But we employ casual workers as well. 
a famous Monday, I was making a tour. At the gate of Haiti, there was a big fight. There was 500 young people fighting with the security people. And I was very curious to know, I said, wait, there is trouble here, maybe riot. And I went at the gate, I stopped, there were young people, there were my sons or my daughters fighting. So I stopped, I said, okay, why, why are you fighting? The head of security told me they are fighting to get a casual walk. And casual walk meant being in a cassava field, weeding, or painting, well, I mean, just casual work, just, and you pay, uh, usually you pay $6 per day, which was probably even acceptable. So I stayed there for three hours, and I was interviewing these young people, and I was asking them simple question. Where are you coming from? What do you do, and what do you want? And the answer were, I'm a graduate of communication. I'm a lawyer from the University of Ibadan. I'm a physical engineer from the University of Ife, and so and so on and so on. All those young people. And uh, that reminded me of my story because my son has left the uh, UK to go to Kinshasa three years without a job as well. Almost the same situation. And as a parent, and I said, well, we have to do something for these young people. So I took a sample of 60. All those people were fighting, and I took them to my office in my boardroom, and I said, okay, now, we have this situation, either you're a Boko Haram, either you go and ruin your parents because uh, they have to continue supporting, so we have to do something. And I said, let's do agriculture. At some time in the discussion in that room, it was just like agriculture for them was associated with three P's. Pain, poverty, and penury. That was the definition of agriculture for those young people. And then I said, convince them, and I said, agriculture is not just uh, production. There are values, and these days you get job in transportation, logistics, in pro processing, and uh, using just an example of uh, U.S. work in transport, soybean in 300 products, and that's a big industry, food industry. So we decided to start a program, and the objective was very simple with those young people. Over 60, we will use agribusiness to grow a job from zero to $350 in one year and a half, and three years, 700. And I said, I will only pay your transport and uh, we will feed you. After six months, 50% of them disappeared because they thought being in IT they would get a job. The remaining one, we started this program, basically after one year, we saw these young people start coming with their own enterprises. This one came with uh, a mixture of cow pea, vitamin A, and make a crunch and start selling it in six states. A young lady called Mercy from Borno State. She ran from Borno State, we trained her. But once she was trained, she said there is a little possibility in Borno State. She went, Mercy has a cottage industry today, just from training. And this program basically has influenced a lot of um, young people. The ADB came and examined it. Akin and his, trip, his, two, his, his team came at the Sina, and they found that this program could be replicated and ADB has taken it to basically 24 countries and so on. So really, I believe that for me, the lesson there was the completely the mindset change, which is really very important. Once the young people and they're supported for that, uh, things happen. Three years ago, I couldn't talk the way I'm talking because I couldn't see any hope in these young people. Today, I'm just so proud. And uh, I think one month ago, I went with a group of them to US 
for a program they were going to go and present form partnership with the young people in the US and ask some of them, Nigeria people like to stay in the US. I say, are you interested in staying here? They say, no, 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 no. We can come and visit. We have our job at home. And I think that's what we really basically would like to, to do. Let me finish by saying that IETA is not only about research, it's not only about building capacity for the young people, it builds capacity for leadership as well. Among them, the first laureate of this prize, Kanayo, was a technician at IETA. He became a scientist, DG, and uh, became president uh, of the bank. Adesina was a scientist. He was my colleague when we were scientists. We have Kalibata here. She's a product of IETA. And I finished by myself. I've been at IETA. All my career has been at IETA. And it was really quite interesting because in 81, I was offered a scholarship to go to study in Minnesota in the US. And I was preparing to go. A scientist came from uh, IETA, from Nigeria. He gave uh, a conference at my university in Kisangani. And I decided to go to Nigeria. Everybody laughed at me. They said, what are you going to go to Nigeria instead of coming to, uh, going to US? And I said, OK, I'm going to Nigeria. Did my PhD in Nigeria. I became a postdoc in Nigeria. I became a head of unit, director. And in 2011, then the position of director general was open for the first, well, not for the first time. They were recruiting for the seven director general. And those director general before, they were all Americans or European. And uh, it was difficult for me to imagine even that they could select me. So I was selected. And uh, the normal things, some of the things we hear, we Africans, have said, oh, they're giving this institution to an African. It's going to collapse. That's what they were telling me. And I like following uh, President Kagame very much. I, lo I love your speeches when uh, uh, you talk about um, Africa, and uh, that's what I was just trying to do. They say it's going to collapse. Yes, my predecessor was an American, left a big, big, big deficit of $15 million, and I knew it only when I was uh, in a job. And um, the first uh, six months, they sent a forensic audit to audit me, who didn't do that uh, deficit. So, uh, yeah, and uh, my wife is here. At the time I was telling him, Charlotte, what did you come to do here? Let's go back home. But uh, really, for the last past seven years, what we've been able to do in ITA is really quite interesting. We have tripled the budget of IETA. We've built seven stations in different countries which have never been built. We are building this program with the youth. We are working very well with the private sectors and our national program. Uh, we say working with our national program is even much better. So we are grateful that uh, the committee has been able to select us and give this prize because this prize is not only for IETA, this is a prize for all these young people who are working with us. And I would like to <laughs> make a plea to President Kagame as the chairman of um, uh, African Union, sir, research has a good return to investment. It has. If it was not research, cassava will have disappeared on this continent. We talk very much about the local content. Now, basically our research shows that you can even eat a bread of cassava, 100% cassava. Local content, we have our food and we can basically 
so the price we are going to get, we want to dedicate it, we want to start a program with it, where we will start teaching agribusiness in primary and secondary school. This price will help us to do that. And finally, Mr. President, thank you very much for hosting us. Thank you very much. Thank you.